the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Eichbonner, and this is David Eichbonner Ministries, our communion and anointing service. Today, I am going to be ministering with the topic, Let the Anointing Work. Let the Anointing Work. But first of all, before I start teaching or preaching, we are going to have a brief time of prayer. Thereafter, we would hear the word of God. Then we would take our communion. This is mine. And after the communion, we shall be anointed with oil. And then the service will come to a close. I encourage you to stay on from the beginning till the end. The reason why we begin with prayer is to prepare our spirit and our soul to receive from God. When we begin with prayer, we are opening ourselves up to the Holy Spirit to receive instructions from Him. We are also ensuring that sin is not going to be used by the devil against us because Satan will want to use sin to disqualify people from receiving from God. So when we pray, we confess our sins, we ensure that there is no legal ground for the enemy to deprive us of our blessings. That is why we always begin with prayer. And those of you who are using this service as these are videos and podcasts for your own fellowship with others. I encourage you that before, if you are watching it um, not live, you're not watching it live, probably a replay, I encourage you that after, immediately after the prayers, you pause the video. You and those with you in your church, on your fellowship, take time to praise God in song, just immediately after the prayer. Then you praise God in song and worship Him. After that, you click on play and you hear the word and the service continues. Because there are people who have started house churches. And so, this uh, services is being used in the house churches. They don't need to be David Eichmann Ministries, but this is the word of God. This is the work of God. And so feel free to use our videos, our podcasts for your church services, whether at home or wherever. You gather the people together and you work with it. At any time that our podcast or video is played, the power of God is released into that environment. The power of God flows into that environment. Even if it's a video 10 years ago, or how many years ago, the things of God are eternal. So when God places a blessing upon a particular ministration, that ministration never goes old, never expires. Whenever you come in contact with that ministration, the power of God is there just waiting for you. So these ministrations are all our videos and podcasts and are there for eternity. It's the work of God. So whenever you are playing this thing, it's fresh. Now let's give God thanks for what he's done for us. Give him thanks. He is the good God. He is faithful and true. Father, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you we are alive and well. We thank you that we see this day. You are faithful and true. Blessed are you, O God, eternity's holy king. Holy are you, O God, faithful God. We thank you for how you have kept us. Thank you that we are gathered today in various nations, gathered together in spirit to worship you in this service. 
We thank you, Lord, for your healing power at work in us. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your protection. We give you thanks, Lord God, that you have helped us all this while. Thank you for what you are going to do in our lives today. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to thank the Lord for specific events in your life, specific things in your life, what the Lord has done for you, how he has guided you. Just give him thanks. Talk to him. Talk to him. He's the faithful God. Give him thanks and give him praise. Give him thanks. Now I want you, I want you to let go of every offense. Anyone who has offended you, whether they have apologized or not, don't let that stop you. Forgive them. Forgiveness is very important. Very important. Forgiveness is very important. And so, if you do not forgive, God will not forgive you. Nobody is what you're going to hell for. Don't lose over anyone. Let go of that offense. They must not apologize before you forgive them. Neither is it that when you forgive them, you draw them into your life. No, forgiveness is not that you go and meet the person that keeps hurting you and say, come over here and do some more. No. Forgiveness is you let go of every desire to avenge yourself. Let go of every desire to destroy that person. And you let go. You just let go of that. Let go of the anger. That's forgiveness. And it's so important. When you forgive, you are released from the power of that evil. Because that evil's power would hold you as long as you have not forgiven. So just let it go. Do that right now. Forgive. That person who has hurt you will have no power over you because you have forgiven. Then ask the Lord to cleanse you of all bitterness. If there is any malice or bitterness in your heart, ask the Lord to cleanse you right now. Ask Him to cleanse you. Ask Him to cleanse you. And then confess your sins unto the Lord. Confess your sins unto the Lord. Confess your sins unto the Lord. Ask Him for mercy right now. Confess your sins. Confess your sins. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive our thoughts, words, and actions. Forgive, O Lord God, the anger that we have harbored in our hearts. Forgive, Lord God, the unfaithfulness. Forgive the wickedness. Forgive the rebellion to parents. Forgive the harshness, wicked, the, the foolish speaking. Help us, Lord. Help us. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness with the blood of Jesus. And strengthen us. Give us grace to overcome sin and discerning of spirits. We thank you, Father, for your kindness. Lord, I pray concerning this service that your power will be eternally at work through this service. I pray, Lord, that you will stretch forth your hand to confirm your word with signs and wonders. Save, Lord. Heal. Deliver. Bless your people. Father, arise and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee from before you. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away, O God, that persecute your children. 
Lord, put to shame the enchanters and diviners. Confirm the word of your servant. Confirm my words, O God. Thank you. Give us understanding of your word. May your presence be manifest wherever this service is participated in. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to be teaching, let the anointing work. The anointing is the presence of God to empower you. It's the power of God to empower you to carry out a function. The anointing is function specific. God anoints you for a purpose. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So the anointing of God was upon Christ Jesus for the purpose of destroying the works of the evil one and showing forth God's goodness. So the anointing is God's enablement by his Holy Spirit in your life to fulfill a specific function. There is something in you that the world needs. God plants seeds. He does not bury um, waste. He plants seed. In this life, you are a seed. That is why Jesus is coming for a harvest. Because every human being is a seed. When you are planting a garden, you look at the garden and you have space for every seed. You have a plan for that garden. You have an you have a plan for where each type of crop will be. The tomatoes on the side, the pepper on this side, the, 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 the corn on the other side, the vegetables, different kinds of vegetables have their place. In your mind, you put it there. And then what do you do? You plant seeds. You and I are seeds that God has planted in this world for this time. We are seeds. We are supposed to bring forth fruit. We are supposed to fulfill our destiny. We are supposed to do what God intended us to do. We well, you know there is something called fertilizer. Fertilizer is applied to the plant so that it can yield more fruit. Just like that, the plant will grow, it will yield fruit. But when you apply fertilizer, the fertilizer can come as organic fertilizer, the one that is made from compost or animal waste or decayed leaves and burnt, uh, when you burn um, some grass, the, the, how will I put it now? When you burn it, the charcoal of it is applied. You have those that are manufactured. Fertilizer that is made in a factory that comes in bags and it's all this powder and all this stuff. But fertilizer is applied and the plant yields more fruit. There are some thing, plants that, there are some things you plant in the garden that they will not do well. They need fertilizer. The anointing of God is your fertilizer. Is the fertilizer that will make you yield more fruit. You need the anointing. You need the anointing to bring more fruit. The Bible talks of a proverb Jesus, a parable Jesus gave. He said there was a farmer who planted, uh, I think, a vine. 
and he observed over time that this thing was not bringing fruit. And then he told the vine dresser and said, cut this tree. Cut it. It is just taking nutrients from the ground and not producing. And the husbandman or the vine dresser, the one taking care of the garden, said to his master, said, please give me just one year or one season. I will dig around it and apply manure. And if it still does not bear fruit, I'll cut it down. There are some of you that are not bearing fruit. There are Christians that are not assets. They are liability. They are only interested in themselves. They don't give offerings. They don't pray for others. They don't evangelize. They are not active in any Christian group. They are just there asking God, bless me, bless my cat, bless my dog. Nothing are they contributing. If you are like that, you are a tree that is not bearing fruit. And the axe is just there waiting for the time to cut you. God desires fruit. If you are not bearing fruit, you are no different from weeds. If you are not bearing fruit, you are not different from weeds. And so you should bear fruit. You should make impact. Jesus said to the wicked servant, and what made that servant wicked? He bore no fruit. He brought no interest. He was given a talent and he buried it. And that was why Jesus called him wicked. Wicked and unprofitable servant. He said, even if you didn't want to trade with that talent, why didn't you give it to the bankers? So that at my coming, there will be interest. Who are the bankers? That Jesus said, even if you can't trade, give it to them. Any ministry that you are giving offerings, tithes, whatever you are supporting that ministry, that ministry's activities are regarded as also your activities. In the sense that you have a part in the reward that God will give for those activities. If you are supporting a ministry and the ministry wins souls, in heaven it is recorded that you also won souls because you, through your giving, have won souls to Christ. So even if you feel that you don't want to preach, you don't want to, you are not, even if you are not called into ministry, why not invest, give to those who are out there, who are preaching, who are praying for people, and then God sees you as profitable. So the anointing is the empowerment for you to be profitable to God. And that is why Jesus, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, said that the disciples should wait for the Holy Ghost to come upon them so that they could be witnesses. Let me read Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So that empowerment was needed for them to be effective witnesses. Now that we have understood what the anointing is, how do we receive the anointing? Number one, by prayer. When you pray and say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. The first is baptize me with your Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the empowerment you receive to become a witness. Then the gifts of the Holy Spirit are released unto you according to the will of God. Speaking in tongues, prophecy, descending of spirits, healing, working of miracles, faith. Different gifts are given to you 
according to God's will for your life and his purpose for your life. When you are called in a certain way, you will have certain gifts. When you are called to be a giver, somebody that is actually supporting ministries, that is a ministry of helps, you are going to have certain gifts. You are going to have discerning of spirit. You will know how to invest, when to invest, when not to invest. You will also be able to discern the needs of certain ministries. As you grow, it doesn't happen so strong initially, but as you grow, you will notice you can discern needs in this ministry, discern needs in that ministry. You know there are certain gifts at work. If you are called into healing, you have the gift of healing and working of miracles. If you are called into teaching, you are going to operate the word of wisdom, the gift of word of wisdom. And so everything, everyone has a portion. If you are into administration, you will have gifts also that, ta- that work with the, the ministry of administration. If you are someone that is called to really be an administrator in the, in the body of Christ, you will have certain gifts also. You have word of wisdom, you have word of knowledge, you have descending of spirits, you have faith. There are gifts that will follow you because of your calling. And so, now the number one way is to ask God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost you know, is different from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, when you give your life to Christ, the Spirit of God comes in and dwells in your spirit. And then he bears, the Bible says, he bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. His witness is his presence in your spirit. And then he is there in you. You are a child of God. But to be an effective witness you now need the empowerment of the holy spirit and that is when he baptizes you with himself he baptizes you with himself in that he immerses you in himself the first one he comes into you when you are born again he comes into you and your spirit comes alive that's the indwelling of the holy spirit the next one is the the feeling of the holy spirit or baptism of the holy spirit they mean the same thing. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Although they don't mean exactly the same thing anyway. So, But when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, now you are, how will I put it? You are immersed. You are, you, the Holy Spirit broods over you. He covers you. He covers you. That's the baptism. No baptism, you are dipped into water. Baptism with water, you are dipped into water and brought out. When you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you are dipped into the Holy Spirit. Now his power comes upon you. And when you move out, his power is at work. I'm simplifying the explanation, right? So, prayer. When you ask God, He gives you the anointing. Then, as I said, there's the indwelling, there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then there's the the, um, continuous filling of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 4, Apostle Peter and John and other disciples asked God for boldness and God's response was To fill all of them, Acts chapter 4, you see that in uh, verse 31 and 32. God filled them with the Holy Spirit. Is it that they didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? They had. Remember, they had been baptized on the day of Pentecost. In fact, Jesus breathed into them before he left. Just like he did Adam. And Adam became a living soul. When he, the Bible says he breathed into them and said, receive you the Holy Spirit. Telling us who created us, that it was him. Because the Bible says God breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul. So he called the disciples, the Bible says he breathed into them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. At that point, they were not speaking in tongues, but they had received the Holy Spirit. He now said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. So they had the Holy Spirit in them at the time Jesus resurrected. When he resurrected, he breathed into them. They had the Holy Spirit in them. Then they waited to be baptized, to be effective witnesses, to be commissioned and empowered to witness. And after that, they needed to regularly stay filled with the Holy Spirit. 
to stay filled with the Holy Spirit is when the Spirit of God takes over. Takes over your life and your body. So you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you st- everyone still needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You wake up, oh Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. You are asking God to manifest himself. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, God manifests himself. You are asking God to manifest himself again. So we are to continuously be filled with the Holy Spirit. So now what hinders us from, what hinders the anointing from functioning in our lives? What hinders the anointing from functioning in our lives? Sin. Sin, number one, hinders the anointing. Number two, ignorance. When you don't know, you become a victim. You are a victim because of your ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge makes you a victim. So the anointing of God can be upon your life. But if you don't know or you don't know how to use it, it becomes ineffective in your life. How can you let the anointing work? Number one, put your flesh under subjection. Your flesh under subjection. Let's read Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews is in the New Testament. A weight is not a sin, but it is something that uh, hinders your walk with God. It could be sleep. It could be your love for food that keeps you from fasting. It could be um, your mentality. It's a weight. It's not a sin, but it's a weight. It's weighing you down. And then there are sins. Then let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 And I keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway So even the apostle Paul was very cautious Because he knew that even with all the miracles he had done, if he did not discipline his flesh, if he did not put in subjection his flesh, he could end up missing heaven. And I wonder why some preachers, some ministers of the gospel, believe that they have attained to be men or women of God and so they can no more sin. And so whatsoever, like I heard a a, a very popular pastor say, that he has attained being a man of God. And a man of God cannot sin. He can only do something wrong. And he was saying that. And I was wondering, has this man ever read that Judas Iscariot obtained a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ? Judas Iscariot was amongst the twelve. The Bible says, you read Acts chapter 1. He, I think Acts chapter 1 or 2. The Bible says he obtained a part of the ministry. And the Holy Ghost could not come until the number was complete. Twelve apostles. They had to be twelve. Twelve. In Acts chapter 1, you see, they had to ensure that the number of apostles of the Lamb were twelve. 
So don't assume that because you're doing so much miracles, you cannot, you cannot fall. Even if you are committing adultery, it is no more sin for you. It's just something wrong. I've heard of people who think that way, that they can commit adultery and it's not sin. It's just something wrong. They can steal. It's not sin. It's just something wrong. Many don't realize it, that Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. These are people that walked with Christ from the beginning of his ministry on earth till when he ascend, till when he went to the cross. The 12 were with him. Their positions were very unique. That is why in the book of Revelation, the foundation of New Jerusalem there are 12 foundations of New Jerusalem. Each one is an apostle of the Lamb. Each one is an apostle of the Lamb. Jesus is the chief foundation. After that, you have the apostles of the Lamb, the 12. That's why in the book of Revelation, the Bible says the 12 foundations of the New Jerusalem. The 12 apostles of the Lamb. Judas fell from that height. Don't think you can't fall. That is why Apostle Paul wrote, he brings his body under subjection, lest by any means, after all his preaching, he becomes a castaway. We shall not be cast away in Jesus' name. So, discipline your flesh. To bring under subjection is to put your flesh in its place, not the boss, the servant. Your flesh should serve your spirit, not boss your spirit. You should not be led by your fleshly desires. Number two, abstain from carnality. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. This is how you can allow the anointing work in your life. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. I read. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul. Fleshly lusts war against your soul. And God deals with you through your spirit. So if you're, you are pursuing money, you love money, you love flashy things, you will not be ready to sacrifice for the gospel. If your aim of preaching is to be popular, you are going to miss it on several occasions. If you are, you see, this fleshly loss has to do with your motives also. Why is it that you want to preach? You want to be famous? Why is it that you want the power of God to move? You want them to know that you have arrived. Why is it that you are giving an offering? Because you want to have control over the minister? Why? Why are you doing what you are doing? Is it because of cravings that are ungodly? When you deal with all those cravings, put them away. Abstain from them. Cut them off. Any sinful desire, deal with it. Abstain from it. How do you abstain? Stay away from environments and people that stir up that lust. Number three, purge yourself. 2 Timothy chapter 19 to 21. 2 Timothy. You see, God has instructed us to purge ourselves. To purge yourself is to look inwards and see if there is anything that is not of God in your life. Periodically, I search myself. What is it? I ask the Lord, show me what is not of you in my life. Show me what is not of you. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. 
So if any man purge himself of these, what iniquity, what lusts, what character defects. We are all born with one character defect or the other. It is our duty to correct it. You receive certain traits from your parents, hot temper, pride, uh, whatever character. What do you do? Purge yourself of it. Purge yourself of it. Look at yourself. What is it that I am doing wrong? Okay, I get angry too easily. Now deal with that anger. Begin to check yourself. Avoid that anger. Ask the Lord for grace to, to help you. And then avoid it. There was a time I had issues with anger as a teenager. What I did, I searched the Bible for scriptures on anger. And then I painted it out. Um, back then, computers were not that common. So I painted it with uh, this paint, I think poster color. Painted it. Painted the scriptures to be very bold. I wrote them on um, paper, cardboard paper, I believe, or drawing book paper. I don't remember now, but I wrote it on paper. Different scriptures, be angry and do not sin. Anger dwells in the bosom of fools. And all I looked for those scriptures, wrote it, and then I pasted each scripture on the four corners of my room, such that when I woke up in the morning, when I opened my eyes on my bed, I saw a scripture on anger. When I turned to get up from my bed to go out of the room, there was a scripture there close to the door on anger. And then when I opened the door to enter into my room, when you open the door, the wall opposite the door had a scripture on anger. And then when I'm coming out of my bathroom, and I'm coming out of the bathroom, the wall that I see has a scripture on anger. And so I had scriptures on, on anger all around me to remind me to deal, not to get angry. That's one way to purge yourself. Look for what is wrong in your life. Ask God to give you grace. And then stop doing it. Deal with it by scriptures. Speaking the word of God changing your character make up your mind to improve your behavior that way the work of god will go smoothly in your life if you have the anointing and you have a bad temper you will kill the people that you are called to save if you have um lust and you have the anointing one thing you should know women especially are attracted by Charisma, spectacular, sensational things. They are attracted by those things. So if you are a man, you have the anointing and you have not dealt with lust. A lot of women will come around you. It's not like they are in love with you. They are in love with what they see you are. They are in love with the pastor who is preaching. They are in love with this popular figure. They are in love with this uh, nice singer. This person that sings so well. They come around. If you haven't purged yourself of lust, you will fall into sin easily. It goes the other way too. Men can be uh, falling in love or infatuated by uh, a female minister or someone who God has raised to be prominent in a group or in society. So what do you do if you are having such problems? If you have greed... And you are in a position where money is flowing. You have not dealt with that greed. You will be a thief like Judas. So purge yourself. Another thing, fast. Fast. This is number four. Fast. Fasting deals with your flesh. Fasting releases you to flow with the spirit. Fasting opens you up to receive from God. Fasting is a time that weakens your flesh and strengthens your spirit. Isaiah chapter 58. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 58. Fasting is a time when you are reminded. You remind yourself through fasting that this world is passing. That the word of God is of more importance than physical food. Isaiah chapter 58, 
verse 6 to 12. I'll read it. Isaiah 58, verse 6 to 12. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and they, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry, that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house, when you see the naked, that you cover him, and that you do not hide yourself from your own flesh? From your, from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rare word. Then shall you call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away from you the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, if you draw out your soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in obscurity, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord and the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones, and you shall be a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Then shall you shall be and they that shall be of you shall build the old waste places. You see the anointing at work. You shall raise foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Fasting enables the anointing to work in your life. Praying also, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. I told you about that. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. We see where the apostles prayed, and the anointing came upon them. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. It says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Prayer does that. Be prayerful. Number six, give. Giving allows the anointing to walk in your life. Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 6, we see Cornelius. He's giving came up to God as a memorial. And God decided to use Cornelius. But first, Cornelius had to be born again. There was no one around him to preach. They weren't preaching to the non-Israelites. So an angel had to come and describe where Peter was for him to send to Peter to preach to him so that he gives his life to Christ. And you know what happened in Acts chapter 10? Peter was still preaching to Cornelius when Cornelius got baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. God was so pleased with Cornelius. He just wanted Cornelius to believe. Cornelius did not start saying the sinner's prayer. The angel could not preach the gospel because angels don't do that. They are not commissioned for that. So the angel was sent to describe where Peter was so that he could send for Peter to preach to him. While Peter was preaching, Cornelius got baptized in the Holy Ghost, he and those that were with him. So you don't need a lengthy prayer before you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You don't need a special school to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need faith. Cornelius believed what he was hearing and God just took it. You remember, God, Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Cornelius believed God and God accounted it to him for righteousness. And that was how the, he was filled with the Holy Ghost without saying sinner's prayer. What was left was baptism with water. And Peter, when he saw it, he said, can anyone now say we should not baptize these people with water? But today, churches will say, no, 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 no. He has given his life to Christ, but we need to take him on a three weeks teaching. After we have taught him a special school, then we would now ask him if he wants to, if he really gives his life to Christ, if he has given his life to Christ, then we shall baptize him in water. How we make religion out of the things of the Spirit? How we water down the word of God by our traditions. You don't need a special baptismal class to baptize people who are giving their life to Christ. There is no way in the Bible the people had to go through a baptismal class before they were baptized with water. 
Cornelius was baptized immediately. The jailer that was in charge of the prison where Paul and Silas were thrown in, when there was an earthquake in the night and Paul preached to the jailer, he didn't tell the jailer, now you are going to go through a three-week school or a two-week school. Uh, school. Thereafter, I will baptize you. That same night, this, this thing happened through the night. At, the Bible says in the middle of the night, Paul and Silas were praising God. Then there was an earthquake. Then the jailer almost killed himself. Paul said, no, don't do it. And then the jailer said, what should I do to be saved? Paul preached to him. And after that, he, he baptized him. Between midnight and 5 a.m., all these things took place. And you put people through a three-week school. Baptize them with water. Then teach them the word of God. That is how it is done. The Ethiopian Enoch was sitting in his chariot with Philip. Philip preached to him. And then the Ethiopian Enoch saw water as they were passing by. And said, can I be baptized? Well, Philip said, all right, nothing is stopping you. He came down baptized and Philip was taken away. That was a ride. Let us not make things difficult for people. So now, giving will allow the anointing to work in your life. Acts chapter 10. Let's read verse 1 to 6. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God. A centurion is a soldier that is captain over a hundred, hundred men. Said one that feared God with all his house and gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? You see, I wonder why people look at angels as servants. They say, Angels are our servants. We send our angels. Oh, and the congregation are excited. Whoa! They say, Just tell your angel to go get money for you. Whoa! What foolishness. When you read from Genesis to Revelation, any time people had an encounter with angels, they didn't tell them, go polish my shoes. Cornelius was afraid. Daniel trembled. The Bible says he fell as a dead man. Daniel, like a dead man when an angel appeared. John the Apostle almost worshipped an angel in the book of Revelation. When David saw the angel of God, he bowed. The angels are sent forth as ministering spirits. But do you know something? They are not our servants. They they don't take instructions from us. They take instructions from God. They are sent to minister unto us, to help us, not at our command. That is why Jesus said to Peter, do you think I cannot ask my father? Do you notice? He didn't say... I cannot send the angels. He said, I cannot. Do you think I can't ask my father to send me 12 legions of angels? Because flesh, humans were made lower than angels. The Bible says for the cross, he was made lower, uh, lower than angels by, for this, by the suffering of death. Jesus took upon himself the form of man lower than angels for the suffering of death. So because he was subject to, he could die. He came as lower than angels. So he he couldn't say, angels, go do this. When he put off this flesh, he assumed his position again, which is far above principality and power. You need to understand, when the Bible says he took upon himself. That is the humility of God. He took upon himself the form of man. The Bible says that man was created lower than the angels. Jesus left his... <laughs> there is the humility, the mystery of the humility of God. Took upon himself man. That was why he didn't say, angels, go do this. He said to Peter, I can ask my father to send me. Then you are dead listening to all these pastors telling you that angels are your people to run errands for you you just tell your angels what to do 
ask the Father, He will instruct the angel to do that for you. They are there to do things for you, but not at your command, at the command of God. I have I am yet to see a scripture where any of the Christians, the early church, were commanding angels to go do things for them. Angels were doing things. Angel came to carry Peter out of prison. But did Peter give the angel instructions? No. No. An angel spoke to Joseph. Did Joseph give the angel instructions? No. The angel spoke to Mary. Did Mary give the angel instructions? No. Who is telling you that you are to command angels? It's a very wrong teaching. Wrong. Oh boy. Now let's read on. Let's read verse 4 from verse 4 again. And when he looked on, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Your prayers and your arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon Etana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. It was Cornelius giving that opened up his life for the anointing to walk in. His giving. So these are ways that the anointing will, is, will be allowed to walk in your life. I want you to ensure that they walk. Number one, abstain from, uh, put your body under subjection. Discipline your flesh. Number two, abstain from carnality. Pursue spiritual things. Stop pursuing all this lust and all those. And whatever is trending, go up now. Number three, pod yourself. Set yourself what is wrong in your life. A character defect. Deal with them. Remove them. Number four, fast. Number five, pray. Number six, give. The Bible says, I'll read this scripture and end this, this teaching. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 and 40 to 42. Matthew, this is how you contact the anointing. When you give an offering, the anointing comes to you. Yes, it does. It flows through your offering. By your giving, the anointing comes. Matthew chapter 10, from verse 40 to 42. He that receives you, receives me. And he that receives me, receives him that sent me. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Now note, that receive is not handshake. Receive is to entertain somebody. When you receive someone in your house, you serve this person a drink. You serve him food. That's receive, to treat someone right. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall no wise lose his reward. I want you to pray right now. As the Lord to reveal to you things in your life that are contrary to his word. Ask the Lord to reveal them. Ask the Lord to help you to walk consistently in the anointing. Ask the Lord to help you to do what is right. Ask the Lord to help you right now. Ask the Lord to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Check yourself. Whatsoever you are doing that is not right, ask the Lord to deal with it, to take it away. Do that right now. The rest, those of you who are not born again, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. I want you to pray with me right now. You can use your own words. Use your own words today. Just say, Lord, have mercy on me. Tell him to have mercy on you. Tell him that you repent of your sins. Just talk to him right now. Anyhow, you don't need eloquence. Just say anyhow you say it. Remember, Cornelius didn't even pray the sinner's prayer. He believed the gospel and he was baptized with the Holy Ghost instantly. I want you to say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. Forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. It is possible to give your life to Christ and immediately be baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10 is proof. Just pray right now. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Do that right now. Father, I thank you for those who are giving their life to you. I pray that you will keep them, you will protect them. 
You guide them. You fill them with your Holy Spirit. Baptize them in your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you preserve them holy and righteous till the end. Father, thank you. Thank you for this message today. Help us, Lord, to walk with you. Lord, we pray that your anointing will be at work in our lives. It will not be hindered, we pray. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So you take your communion bread now. Get it ready. If you are watching on social media, if if you are watching on my channel, David Aigbona, or David Aigbona Ministries, because different platforms, I think I'm going to harmonize them to just be David Aigbona probably. I want you to subscribe. Click on the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up so that you see more of it. Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you click subscribe. If there's a bell notification sign by it, click on that bell so that you know that you receive notifications. You can be subscribed and not receive notifications. You will not be told when I have, I have uploaded uh, content or I, I am live. So click on the bell notification sign. If it says that you, if it shows you options of how you want your notifications, click on all. Or if the bell notification sign is there, you click on it and you see that the thing now crosses. It means that you were already re to receive notification. You click on it again so that it becomes plain. But just read to ensure that you are receiving notifications. And then give it a thumbs up. It will make the video spread more. And um, my channels are on various platforms. We have the podcasts on SoundCloud. I have a channel, David Eichmann, on SoundCloud. Then we are on uh, BitChute, Brighton, Gab.com, Odyssey.com, Rumble, Locals.com, Patreon. My videos on Patreon are free. All my videos are free. We are also on, uh, yeah, I mentioned Brighton and Gab.com. We are expanding different um, media platforms and please if you are already subscribed to me on youtube and facebook subscribe to these other platforms also because <laughs> there's a lot of um, hatred for free speech so be sure to subscribe to the alternate media platforms like odc.com and bitchut subscribe to odc.com bitchut make sure at least one of these two you are subscribed so that in case uh these other Googles and Facebook act their usual way, which they have been doing, you will still get content because we are being restricted on these two big platforms. And so you are also free to upload my videos to your own channel so that the word of God goes forth. I am not pursuing followers or subscribers. I want the message out there. So if you have a plat if you have your own channel, uh, you can put my videos there so that people who follow your channel will see these videos. Put them complete. Don't try to change the message. Just leave it there. Let the word of God go forth. And if you want to reach me, you can reach me by WhatsApp and Telegram and Signal. Or you can call me directly. The number I am currently using is plus two three four seven zero. Three three, three three, four three six eight. I'll call it again. Plus two three four seven zero three 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 four three six eight. By email, David Igbona Ministries at gmail dot com. Igbona is spelled A I G B O N A. That is A-I-G-B-O-N-A, -A, David Ibona Ministries at gmail.com. Lift up your bread and your drink. Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, God Almighty, in obedience to your word, we take communion. 
proclaiming that the Father has sent His only begotten Son to die for our sins, that we may be redeemed to Him. And that Jesus rose from the dead and that we are one with Christ. Lord, turn this bread to the body of Jesus in us. Turn this drink to the blood of Jesus in us. And we invoke the power of the new covenant of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. We invoke the power of the cross in our lives. We say, Lord, everything that is in us, which is not of you, remove it. Whatsoever is in us that is not in Christ Jesus, take it away. We pray, Lord, that sickness, failure, poverty, frustration, which is not in the body of Jesus Christ, be removed from our lives. Any damaged organ, we pray, that it shall be replaced with a new one from the body of Jesus. For in him you have placed all our blessings. You have blessed us with Christ. He is our sufficiency. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you break your bread. It is bread baked without yeast. It can be in the form of wafer or a loaf. Even if you are alone, break it. Jesus Christ's body was broken so that your life will not be broken. Today it's been five years since we've been doing this communion and anointing service. We started about this time, September 2018. God instructed me to begin. And for five years I've been doing it and counting. I will continue. Take up your oil. Father, I thank you for every oil lifted unto you. I pray, Lord, that You will bless the oil in our hands and turn it from ordinary oil to holy anointing oil. May your power flow through it. May the anointing of your Holy Spirit flow through this oil. Come upon us by this oil. We pray that according to your word, for your word says, Touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Your word says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. Your word says that the disciples went around anointing the sick and they were healed. Your word says, you love what is right, despising evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Lord, may your protection, deliverance, healing, uh, consecration, favor, Come upon us now. May all who are anointed with this oil experience these things. May this oil be an instrument in your hands, O Lord, to bring protection, deliverance, healing, breakthrough, prosperity, favor to all who are anointed and to the properties, the homes anointed. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You take your anoint yourself. And then you are free to anoint your home. And receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you for participating in this service. I am David Agbona, and this is David Agbona Ministries. I look forward to hearing from you. Please ensure you subscribe to my channel, share this video. Give it a thumbs up, and feel free to contact me directly, or you can... 
leave a comment. I like reading your comments and answering them. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you.